let's jump into today's content, today's scripture, today's idea. Um, I want to show you something, um, what I believe could be the most important spiritual quality for anybody. That's a big statement, isn't it? (laughs) It's the most important spiritual quality with potential to impact your entire year, but also your entire life. This spiritual quality impacts everything, your, your spiritual strength, Um, your family life, your ministry life, all of your relationships, all of your financial potential, this, this one quality. And I'll tell you what it's not. It's not based on your appearance, like how good you look in church. All right, I got dressed up good for church, man. I'm, I'm really rocking it now. No, it's not your, it's not your appearance. It's not your background. Like, oh, I got a testimony, so I got, I'm doing good. No, it's not that you don't have a testimony. You do have one. It's not your background. It's not your education. Oh, do you have a degree? Not have a degree? Did I go to Bible college? Doesn't matter. That's not. You want to know what it is? You want to know what it is? Finally, it's consistency. It's consistency. Now that might take. Some of you by surprise, like why, why is that so important? Why is it so important to, to, to talk about consistency? And I know what some of you are thinking too is like, oh, dang it. <laughs> oh, dang it. That's the one thing I'm not good at. Both hands up for me. I don't know. I just, I struggle with it. And I think we all do. It's like, darn it. We're going to talk about consistency, but that is the one thing I'm consistent about is my inconsistency. It's terrible. I'm inconsistent with what I eat. I'm, in, I'm inconsistent with my workouts. I'm inconsistent with being on time. I'm, in, I'm inconsistent with church. I'm, in, I'm just, I just, uh, str- I struggle with it, man. And if that's you, today is your day. It's gonna be so awesome because I, I, and I just gotta like be relatable for a minute. It's easy for me because some pastors are like, they're the ones that dress in the three-piece suits, man. And they got it. They got their stuff together, all right? Me? All right, I'm wearing a jean jacket. So I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. It's easy for me to relate with just the struggles, the regular struggles that we all go through. And consistency was one of them for a long, long time. I'll be honest with you. I struggled with my consistency in my prayer life. Um, my prayer life. Now you would think, you're a pastor. You, you get everything right all the time, right? Well, no. Now early on in my life, early on in my ministry life, I should say, I met this guy who's coming actually to First Wednesday. His name's Anthony Flores. Pastor Anthony is an absolute gangster, which is like kind of a term for how awesome he is, but it could also be true a little bit. Pastor Anthony's awesome guy from Stockton actually. And I met him in like my first few months of pastoring. And he had like the fastest growing church. He had the, the biggest ministry. And he's like this super like stocky, confident, makes decisions like bam and makes the right decision. I'm like, this guy's crazy. I want to learn how to be more like him when I grow up, even though we're like the same age. I go over there to his house and I I spend some time with him and his whole family. I'm like staying at his place. And I learned one thing right away that him and his family, the one thing I learned is that he was so consistent and of just waking up. He, he's like, the first thing we're going to do and to, to show you around is we're going to wake up at six o'clock. We're going to have devotions. And of course I woke up late. (laughs) <laughs> of course I did, because that's, that's about my flow. I'm like a starving artist over here. Of course I woke up late that same day, but that's what I saw. That's the first thing I saw was how consistent he was. So I, 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 early on, I had a consistency in my devotional time and reading my Bible and checking off those boxes, you know, on the Bible reading plan to get the chapters done. But in prayer, it was more nebulous to me. I just, I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. I wasn't sure if I was if I'm praying long enough or short enough, praying the right way, praying whatever. And it was actually very recently, if you were here since August, you know, we did a a, a prayer series called The Big Ask. And that was like, I did it for y'all, but it was kind of for me. I'm just saying it was, and I transformed my prayer life that early on and I, I, cause I struggled with it. And since then I've seen consistency in my prayer life that I'd never had before. I was, I was dug in. I began to see answers to prayer that I'd never seen before just because I, I started being consistent in it. And I, have to be, and I have to be honest, I wasn't. And so I wanna give that to you. I wanna give you permission to admit to yourself, maybe I haven't been the most consistent. Maybe I haven't been consistent in those most important things. And I know this about, and it's, it's found in scripture, some of, the, some of the most spiritual people we've ever heard of, like this man, the apostle Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, he writes it like this, and I'm gonna read it out of the smallest print Bible. What was I thinking about this? It's in chapter seven of Romans, uh, starting in verse uh, 15. 
Now I got to find it. Jeez, Louise, what was I thinking? Yeah, come on. Yeah, pray for me, right? Chapter 7, verse 15. Is he, this is Paul, the man of God. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. <laughs> Instead, I do what I hate. But I know what I'm doing is wrong. It shows that I agree with the law. Okay, and it goes on in verse, in verse 18. It says, I know that nothing good lives in me. That is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but can't. Can, can anybody relate with this? I mean, am I the only one that relates with this a little bit? I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. What is wrong with us? What is it? Is it just him or is it just me? Or is it all of us sometimes, man, we feel like, man, I, I know what I want. I know how I, I want to get there, but it's just, I am so inconsistent at times. If you are tired of, of having great intentions, but then falling short, this message is for you. Today is all about today I choose that with God's help, I'm going to be consistent. With God's help, I'm going to be consistent. So we're in this series called Today I Choose, which is all about your, the direction in your life is determined by the quality of your choices. The direction of your life is determined by the quality of your choices, which is good and bad. It's good because we have some ownership in how our life turns out, but it's bad because, man, I stink at making good choices when it comes down to it. At times, I can really, really stink at it. So today I'm going to choose to be consistent. Well, how? Why? Like what? Look, talk to me a little bit more about this. So we're going to go into the scriptures just a little bit. But before we do, I just want to give you this statement. This is like the first kind of notes. I want you to write in your notes if you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, write this down anyways. All right. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. Successful people. And I don't know, I've never met anybody that didn't want to be successful either in their family or in their business or whatever. Like everyone has their own idea of success and wants to get there. But successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. And what I want for all of us is that we would live in a place of consistency for the things that matter the very most. Uh, it's been said, we are what we repeatedly do. Ever heard that? Not what we do occasionally that makes the difference, but it's what we do consistently. So scripture does teach us how we can get on this. And I want to turn your attention to the book of Daniel um, because this guy, Daniel, shows us consistency in a way that I think is, is so helpful. At least I found it this way, um, so helpful. So he, Daniel, in your Old Testament, um, this guy uh, was a young man when we're introduced to him in scripture. Uh, but just to give you some context, this is uh, happening, this, this part of the Bible in, in Daniel chapter six is happening around, all numbers are approximate, um, around 605 BC, so a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago, but this was about 18 years um, after Babylon conquered Israel. Uh, if you didn't know that that happened, yes, it absolutely happened. Jeremiah, the, another prophet in your Old Testament, talked about it. It was going to happen, absolutely happened. And then um, they got conquered. Israel got conquered. The people of Jer Jerusalem was like their, their main spot, and they just got absolutely destroyed. They got absolutely destroyed. But this is what um, the, Babylon the Babylonians would do when they conquered a place. Um, they wouldn't just wipe out the people. They would actually capture the best and brightest, and they would take them on as their own. And so that's what happened to Daniel is that when they conquered, it was like, it's like two in one. It's shame on the, on the culture that they took over. It's like, ha ha, we got all your, all your best and brightest kids, right? All your best and brightest boys. But on top of that, it was also leadership pipeline for them, which just to kind of like go on a rabbit trail here, um, every good organization, uh, company, church has a leadership pipeline. Evil ones steal leaders from elsewhere. <laughs> good organizations, good businesses, good churches grow their leaders up from within. So the Babylonians actually teach us a leadership to don't, which is to just recruit leaders from everywhere else and bring them all in and we'll be fine that way, but not have anything from within set up. But that's what happened to Daniel. He got taken, he was bright, he was seen as bright and he got he, they were trying to indoctrinate him into Babylonian culture. But the leadership noticed Daniel, like the main leadership of Babylonia, um, the Babylons, they, 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 they noticed Daniel was above and beyond. He was way good. Daniel was way good. And he had a couple friends. Uh, 
which I, it's so fun to say their names. It's not about them at all, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Come on, somebody. I may not have gone to children's church as a kid, but I still like to say it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are his buddies, and those are, those are their Babylonian names, but I can't pronounce their Hebrew names, so I stick with the. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I'm just doing the best I can. But Daniel's there. He's in the mix, and they're noticing Daniel, his head and shoulders above in, in, in consistency in leadership ability. And they were gonna promote Daniel over the top of all these Babylonian leaders. Like over the Babylonian leaders, they were gonna promote Daniel over them. And so what happened was, is these Babylonian leaders were trying to discredit Daniel. They were like, oh, no, don't do that. Don't promote this Hebrew boy over us. Don't do that. Like, so what they started doing, they started digging up dirt on him. They started like going back and like talking to his (laughs) ex-girlfriends. And like, What was he like back then? Oh, he picked his nose and blah, blah, blah. No, they went to all of his old social media posts and try to get, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, and by the way, like, don't go back and look at 2009 for Pastor Elliot Jones online. It was nothing but Chuck Norris jokes. (laughs) That's how I won Tiffany over, Chuck Chuck Norris jokes. That's how (laughs) They're looking at all of his social media, but they're trying to dig up dirt on this guy, but they couldn't find it. They couldn't do it at all. They were like trying to find fault in his character, right? They were trying to dig up dirt on him. They were trying to get him canceled. Cancel Daniel, all right? We don't want him. But this is what it says in in Daniel chapter six. We're gonna start this in verse four. I'm never doing this again, by the way. I'm never gonna try to read small print ever again. You, first service on this day. This is the last time I'm gonna try to do this. But verse four goes like this. They began searching for some fault in the way that Daniel was handling the government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. And this is the part that like really stuck out. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. It's like his consistency. The thing that stuck out the most, they, he, he was always on time. He always did the right thing. So the only way that they could ruin Daniel was through his faith in God. That's the only thing that they had. That's the only thing they had to say. And I was like, let's ruin him because we know this Hebrew boy is gonna worship the one true God. That's not what they called him, but that's who he is. They said, that's the only way we're gonna get after him. So let's, let's do this. We're gonna, we're gonna create this new law. So they come up to King Darius, all right? Darius was the, was the king. And they're like, come up to him. Oh, king, man, you are rocking that robe today. Man, that turban is looking fly as all get out. Come on, let's go. King, you are, you are looking fantastic. By the way, you know, you just are so awesome, king. You're so awesome that I think, I think everybody ought to pray only to you. Everyone ought to pray only because just look at your, come on, look at your bad self. They're like holding up the mirror for him. Like, look at you, yeah. Everyone who prays to any other God or person other than you ought to get thrown in a lion's den. King, fly, king. Yeah, they talked him right into it. And, And king, the king, by the way, not in my notes, not in your notes. I was just thinking about this. The king loved Daniel, loved Daniel. Even though Daniel was like, doing his own thing spiritually. The king wanted him to live. What, when, they, like, when he got busted, because this is what happened in, in, in Daniel 6, all the way to verse 23. Let's go to it. Verse 23 says, boom. Um, they, uh, they, oh, let's not go there yet. Let's not go there yet. That's a, that's a teaser. That's a teaser. He got thrown in the lion's den. All right, everybody went to child, children's church has seen this. He got thrown in the lion's den and God shut the mouth of the lions. All right, he lived. And, de- and the king wanted him to live. He absolutely lived. But this is what happened. Go to verse 23 now. It says, the king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him for he had trusted his God. And that stood out to me too. Because he had trusted his God. See what set Daniel apart was not that he learned to trust God in the lion's den. It's the fact that he had trusted God before the lion's den came. Now, some of you feel like you're in a lion's den. You feel like, man, my life is a tragedy. My, my life is, I'm going through it right now. You're in the lion's den. You can find trust in God when you're in the lion's den, but I'm telling you, it's better to trust God before the lion's den hits. It's better to trust God ahead of time. It's better to learn to trust God before you get thrown in the pit because while you're in the pit, you can have that consistency leading all the way up to that traumatic moment that you're going through. It's so powerful when I, when I learned this. It's like 
Daniel didn't learn to trust God in the, in the lion's den. He learned to trust God in his prayer closet. And for me, and, and as I already shared, that's really powerful for me because I, I want to be, I want to be a praying man, someone who, who leans on that, who's, who's really leaning into God, not just when I need him, but it's deeper than that. Like that's who I am. That's who I want. I want to know him so personally. I want to know him better because most of us pray occasionally. Very few of us pray consistently. And it's not what we do occasionally that makes the big difference in our life. It's what we do consistently that makes the big difference in our life. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing how important this is that you might not be going through it right now, but there's some things coming in your life. And I, church, I just want you to be ready for it when it comes. I want you to be strong when it gets here. That's why it's so important to be consistent in, in church. Of course, I got to say that. I'm your pastor. Be consistent in church, but I mean it. I mean it because lots of people show up to church when something's going on, you know, like when I need something, when life is hard, lots of people do that and we love you, like when we're here for you. But it's not what you do occasionally that makes the difference, what you do consistency. If we can learn to teach ourselves consistency in, 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 in showing up to church, how about in, in reading our Bible, in, um, in spiritual disciplines like that, how about just in our diet, how about in our media habits, how about in prayer, when, because what we do consistently is what changes our lives, not what we do occasionally. You know, we're, we're smack in the middle of 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're actually got one week left. Somebody said, amen. <laughs> because I always, every year I fast YouTube. It's like a part of what I fast every single year. And it's always during the playoffs. Oh, I don't know what, I don't know why. I just always do it to myself. And I would have loved to see the Cowboys get stomped last week. I would have loved it. Gosh, that would have been like the best thing ever. I had to hear about it secondhand like a dummy. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see them just like flaying on the ground like babies, like just, yeah, that's preach. <laughs> and then the rest of you are never coming back to this church again. That's okay. Like nobody's perfect. What can I say? But I always do that. But 21 days of prayer and fasting is we got one week left. But even if you haven't engaged with us yet in that, I'm encouraging just roll in now. Just start now and learn to be consistent in it. We're doing two days in person. We've never done it before, but we're doing two days in person prayer um, on Thursday night at 5.30 is one. And then Saturday morning at nine is another one. And I'm just encouraging you, man. We'll teach you how to pray. We'll show you how to pray. It's 60 minutes flat, all right? We, we are very timely on it because we respect your time. We do. It's not like this open-ended, and we're just gonna pray until the sweat turns to blood. No, 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 no. We're gonna pray. We're gonna get after it. And then we're gonna be done on time because you got things to do after that. It's fine. It's all good. Come on down, check it out. And then once it continues going, like for Thursday nights, then you'll know it's always available to you. You can always be here and raise yourself up to be a praying man of God or a praying woman of God to say, like, I wanna, I wanna start some things new. I mean, you may not need it now, but you'll need it someday. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's gonna be a day. If you're not, if you're not in a storm, guess what? There's a storm coming for you because that's just life. And what I want for you is to be ready when that day comes through consistently, through consistency, because it's what you do consistently that makes a difference in your life, not what you just do occasionally. I hope you're getting this, and I'm going to give you three ways how right now. So let's, let's do this. Let's start it off. Let's do it right. Number one, how do I grow in my consistency? Number one is this. I want you to start with the why. Write this down. Commit it to memory. I'm starting with the most important one. This is the most important way to grow in your consistency is to start with the why. Why did Daniel pray consistently? I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't like the Pharisees in the New Testament that would pray to be seen, that would pray so that people could watch how holy they were. No, that, because that doesn't have legs. That won't last. It doesn't, it doesn't really pay. It's not a deep why that'll make a real, real difference in your life. It wasn't for outward show. It was born out of an inward devotion. I am, a, I am a man of God in a strange land, a foreign land, and I don't wanna get disconnected from the God whom I love so much. It was born out of devotion, not of a desire to be seen, okay? Find your why, and it has to be deep. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Like your why, you've gotta learn to find your why. With anything you wanna be consistent in, you've gotta learn to find down, it's like down here. It's like in your tummy. I don't know. Like that's the, it's down here. It's your why. You've got to find it. And that's why, that's why New Year's resolutions don't last. Is because 
you know, I want the new car or I want to look skinny. And it's like, it, those don't last. They don't last. And you know what else happens? It's like, oh, okay. And you know how I know they're fa- they fail is because you decide in December, you know what I'm going to do? On, on January 1st, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my diet. But all the way up to then, it's nothing but candy bars. I'm, 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 you stuff yourself absolutely filled with all the donuts inside. That's not a why. Like, why would you wait? If it was a real why, why would you wait? Like, if you went to the doctor in October and they said, if you smoke one more cigarette, you dead. You dead. Dead, dead. All the way dead. Dead, dead. You'd be like, all right, January 1st. No, no, you wouldn't. You'd be like, no, it's life and death. That's a good, life and death is a good why. (laughs) It's a very good why. It's very compelling. Um, But that's the difference between a why that, that isn't that important. Because sometimes your why can deceive you. It's like, yeah, I do want to look skinny. That's a good why. Well, it's, 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 I would encourage you to, to go deeper than that, to go deeper than the outward and go to the inward. Like, what, why is it really, really important to you that you're doing the things that you want to do? You want to grow in your consistency. You got to start with the why. It's like, you, you want to grow closer to God? Why? Because that's what good church people do, huh? No, that can't be it. It can't be it. It's, be, it's gotta be because I wanna go closer to God because I'm sick of the devil attacking me and my family. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of like always coming back into this, having to come back to God and then drifting away and then coming back to God. I'm sick of it. It's gotta be down here. That's my why. I wanna be close to him and I wanna leave a legacy in my family of consistency as well. That's a why. That's a why. How about I, you want a better marriage? Y'all want a better marriage. Why? Because my spouse is a jerk and they don't do the things I want them to do. So I'm going to get my marriage better because I'm going to try and get my spouse better. No, that's, that is not going to last. No, it's got to be because I, I, want a, I want a better marriage because I want to honor those vows I made. I made vows before God and I am determined to follow through with them. And I want my kids to see not a fake happy marriage, but a real happy marriage. Because I believe kids can see through the junk and they can see into the real thing. And I don't want to teach my kids to have a fake happy marriage. I want to leave a legacy for my children that they will see a real happy marriage. So I'm going to be the change. Someone needs this today. Someone needs to, to see that it's their consistency and they need to find their why. Find what really matters to you. Find what really... Why? Why do you want financial stability? Because you want a new car? Not going to last. Why do you want, why do you, because I'm sick and tired of living paycheck to paycheck and not being free to be generous like I want to be and not being free to be able to be the influence that I want to be in my community and and make a change, make a difference. It, It can't be for the toys because you won't keep a budget just because you want a new car. You might for the short term, but it's not deep enough. I'm encouraging you Men and women of God, look deeper. Look for your why. Make it matter. Keep looking until it's until it's real. Until it's all the way down in the pit of why do you want to do this? Why do you want to stop this bad habit? Maybe a, a toxic habit in your life, in your private life, or maybe it's not private. Maybe it's public, but it's just a bad habit. You want it to go away. Why? Because it's annoying. Why? Because it's expensive. I would argue that's not going to last. No, because this generational curse stops with me. I'm not passing this down anymore. I'm not gonna do this to my kids. I'm not gonna do this to my family. It's not just an annoying habit. No, this is my life we're talking about and it stops with me. It's gotta be deep. This is not willpower. This is why power. I don't want you to live uh, from a place of willpower. Willpower is good for the short term. We all need it. This is why power. Why power overrides willpower. It's what brings devotion. It's when the king says, shut up, stop praying to your God or, you're, or you'll die and says, no, I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the test then. I'm gonna keep on praying. When you wanna be consistent, you're gonna face obstacles. You're gonna face resistance. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna lack support. You're not gonna feel like it. But when you find your why, you'll find a way. When you find your why, you're gonna find a way. And willpower will rise to the level of your why power. Mm, that's good. That wasn't even in my, that's good. That's good right there. That's it, your why power will carry you when willpower is weak. So like when, with, with my prayer life, um, I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, why, why did I want a good prayer life? Why did I want that? Why? Because, because that's what good pastors do. Because I want people to see, because I want 
you know, whatever. I want to like meet the, the standard. No, that's not a good why for my, my own prayer life. I wanted my prayer life to get better. And by the grace of God, I've had some success in, in the last several months. And I'm so excited that I get to share that with you. It's not always that way, but this is, this is, this is actually a good result. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I really wanted to praise because I was sick and tired of hitting my head on a wall and not seeing breakthrough in the most important areas of my life. I was sick of it and I came to the end of myself. I'm just telling you my story. I came to the end of myself and realized I will not see the things I know God has called me to see if I don't learn to seek him in the supernatural. If I don't learn to seek God's power, my power is not enough. And when I saw that, when I learned that, and he began to answer some of those prayers that I began to consistently, consistently pray, it opened my eyes. And because I know the devil attacks every single day. He attacks every single one of you, but if he can't get to you through you, he might try to get to you through me. So another reason I, I wanted to grow in my prayer life, because I know if a pastor fails, it hurts a lot of people. And so it's, it's, not, even, it's not even me, it's outside of me. I, I, was, I wanted to do it for you. That's another reason, but I'll, I'll tell you another, another reason is that I, I wanted my kids to walk in on me. I don't know how else to explain that. I wanted my kids to see that their dad was a praying man. I wanted my kids to see that their dad is a devoted man. I wanted them to come out and find me in my word, find me in prayer because, you know, my, my garage is out there, my little office, whatever, and I do all my devotions. I wanted my kids to see that. And it got, it got way down here. So when I wake up dog tired, I still to this day force myself to wake up. It's been many, many years. But when my willpower runs out, my why power lifts it up. Because I want, I want my kids to see that. I want them to see what it means to be a manly, a godly man. Not a manly, godly man. <laughs> They'll never get that. <laughs> but at least godly, right? I want you to start with your why. And number two is this. I want you to plan to fail. <laughs> but you didn't see that one coming. That's okay. It's counterintuitive. I want you to plan to fail. Daniel, it says, it says Daniel prayed three times a day in, in Daniel uh, 6.10. It said that, that he prayed three times a day. Do you think he ever missed one? Do you think he ever missed a prayer time? I'm betting that he did. How about when they were at marching them into uh, Babylon? Probably missed a time there. What if, you know, the king, King Darius made him work late that night? You know, he, he had to miss one. He had to miss one. Um, what if, you know, they got stuck in a camel jam? You know, there's like a camel jam. It was nothing but, it was nothing but nose to butt as far as the eye could see. Camels just stacked up. You know, he missed, he missed his night. How about like the big game was on, you know, it was Niners versus whoever, whatever. And his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made beetle wings, you know. And they was like, man, I'm just feeling these beetle wings. And the next morning he wasn't feeling too good. So he missed his morning too, that was too much. That didn't even, that one was kind of gross. That's okay, too far, too far. But he probably missed one. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He probably missed one. And here's the problem when it comes to this, this mindset is uh, we have this all or nothing mindset. That if I miss one, I'm a failure. Oh, I give up. Oh, I missed one. I missed a day at the gym. Might as well just cancel my membership. I struggle with that big time. I'm, I am that way. I'm an all or nothing guy. I'm going to do it every time. I've had to overcome this one personally. If we, if we fail one time, forget it, I failed. Write this in your notes. Being consistent isn't the same as being perfect. Please, somebody get this. Please, somebody internalize this. Please, somebody remember this for the rest of your life. You can be consistent without being perfect. You can miss a day. Just don't miss two. That's okay. It's a miss one, but don't miss two. All right, like when, I, when I'm teaching, I was teaching a development group just this, this recently, and we teach each other a lot in these development groups. I'm in with these guys, you know, it's awesome. And I was talking to them about praying with their spouse or praying with their wife or their future wife. And uh, uh, talking about that was like, hey, keep it simple, keep it short. All right, if your prayer time with your spouse is just, God, thank you for this day, amen. <laughs> I know how some of you guys are. It's okay, you, that's a prayer. That is a prayer, you know, and, and even when your spouse is acting like a jerk, 
do it anyways, you know, just get in there. And I've never been in that situation myself ever, ever, where I've had to like be like, all right, well, this is, it's consistency. And if you miss one, just don't miss two. If you miss a day, just don't miss two. I give you permission not to have to be perfect. We have this illusion of perfection that keeps some of us from even getting started. That's what it is. Like we picture all oh, praying with my spouse means, you know, I need to start, start off by praying in tongues. And then, you know, then I'm getting into praying for Israel and then I need to pray for the lost. And then I need to, it's like, you need to chill, first of all. And it's not gonna look like that right away. It's not gonna look like that at first. I don't care how long you've been saved. Some of you are feeling down about yourself because it's been so, you've been saved so long and you've never made this a habit. I give you permission too. You don't have to be perfect at this. Just get it started, get it going. You got this. It's okay, just start easy, start simple. Um, just get started. I got this illustration I'd love to show you, um, a picture of a white belt and a black belt, okay? Uh, so a black belt, what's the difference between a black belt and a white belt? A black belt is someone you run from. A white belt is someone you laugh at. Isn't that true? I would get my butt kicked by a white belt, but that's okay, that's okay. But let me, let me point out the real difference between a black belt and a white belt. All a black belt is, is a white belt that never gave up. I don't do karate, but it makes sense to me. I know. And I mean, I know. I've been consistent in some areas of my life, like the diet, like with exercise. Like I've got a few years under my belt and I know now, having done it for a little while, I know the only difference that I'm bringing to the table is that I rarely miss. I rarely miss. And I, it's, if we have this perfection in mind, like I need to be Ronnie Coleman in three months, <laughs> it's not gonna work out well for you. Ronnie Coleman is a bodybuilder, everybody. It's okay, you'll get it. Just keep up, keep up. It's all right, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I need to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in, you know, three months. That's not gonna happen, okay? It's not gonna happen. We can't all look like, you know, as strong as, as some people do. It's all right, just hang in there. Consistency can move mountains over time. You might eat the wrong thing, you might oversleep, you might buy something more expensive than you'd planned on. You might look at something you shouldn't. Yeah. Maybe you missed a, a day in your Bible reading plan and you lost your streak. Oh my gosh, there's nothing worse. Hate it. But I heard though, you can reset the time on your phone and actually go back a day. No, just, that's cheating, huh? You won't be perfect, but don't confuse being consistent with being perfect. Start with the why, plan to fail. This is the last one. This one's so important too, is I want you to fall in love with the process. Fall in love with the process, not the outcome not the outcome. I don't want you to get fixated on the outcome. I want you to fall in love with the process. That's, if you can do that, oh my goodness, watch out world. Well, you could change everything. If you fall in love with the process instead of the outcome. Daniel, let's get back to the scripture here. Daniel wasn't trying to get promoted. That's the outcome, but that wasn't what got him there. He wasn't, he wasn't going for like some goal that once he gets there, then he's successful. That's not a good why. That's not a good, you know, you need to learn to fall in love with the process. Just consistently, he was just consistently doing what mattered to him and mattered to God. And this is what the, the mistake that most people make. We obsess about the, the goal. The goal weight, the goal physique, the goal number in the bank account. The goal number of cars in the driveway, the goal number of, of notches, which is not a goal anybody should have anyways in the bedpost, whatever, don't do that. But we do, we get obsessed with a goal, any kind of goal. We get obsessed with the outcome and we forget that it's all about the process that gets us there. Because we, we have this terrible mindset that unless, until I reach my goal, I'm not a success. Like all along that process, I'm a failure until I reach my goal and then I'm a success. No, no, that is, the la that is not scriptural. It's not biblical. It's not what Jesus even asked us to do. do. He who builds his house on the rock, no, not who has a built house, he who builds, it's a process. You gotta fall in love with the process, fall in love with the growth. Fall in love with getting a little tiny bit better and just showing up every day. You can do that. You can accomplish just about anything. 
that God has planned for you. Anything God has planned for you. Let me rephrase that. You can accomplish anything God has planned for you if you just choose to show up every single day. A win isn't the next achievement. The win is you show up day in and day out. If you are consistent, you will make progress. You are not successful when you achieve a future goal. You are successful when you honor God today. That's when you, you are successful when you, when you make the choice today, when you choose to honor him today, when you give your life to him today, when you say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to do the right thing today. That's when you're a success. That's when you can look God square in the eye and say, I did what you called me to today. Not when I'm this successful, not when my church is this size, not when my ministry is this powerful, not when I've won this many people to the Lord at, at work. No, 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 no. It's that you're faithful every single day to do what God has called you to do. That's a success. That is the picture of success. Today I choose that with God's help, I'm going to be consistent, that when I'm weak, he is strong. Today I choose not to do what just feels good in the moment. Today I'm gonna choose that I'm gonna act on who God has called me to be. You are not successful when you achieve the future goal. You are successful when you honor God today. And I wanna pray for you on that, on that note. I wanna pray for you because some of you needed to hear that, I just know it. That you needed to be reminded that God just wants to use you in the moment. He wants to use you today. He wants to remind you today, just stay faithful. Just keep doing. And maybe there's some things you need to start. Today's your day. Just start today. Don't wait till January 1st. Don't wait till February 4th to be with people and to, to, to be in community. No, God is calling you today. And he, he calls you a success when you do what honors him today. Let's pray. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes together. Father, thank you so much for bringing us this word. Thank you so much for, for giving us the encouragement through this book of Daniel and through his story, his real story that can change our lives. Lord, I just ask that you would begin to draw out um, some of the discouragement that people have faced, some of the discouragement and, and um, the things that have been holding us back, the, the picture of perfection that we know we can't meet or think we can't meet. And it's been keeping us from even starting Lord, I pray that you would begin to remove those through your word and through this, this, this message today, that you would begin to move those, break down the walls that are, that's keeping us from just honoring you today and being faithful in you today. And that first, that first brick that needs to get moved, Lord, is just putting our hope in you, putting our trust in you, putting our trust back in you perhaps. And so I wanna pray over you if, you are, if you're thinking that way, if you wanna just put your faith in God, put your trust in him. And, and truly kind of just trust fall into God, as it were, as, as, a, as a manner of just looking at how it looks. Just fall into you, say, God, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm learning to trust you. I may not be perfect at it. I may have been dancing around it for quite some time, but I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready to come to you. And I know that you'll meet me just where I'm at and you will continue to grow me. It's not the picture of perfection that I'm gonna get this one day, but Lord, I'm coming to you and I wanna put my faith in you. Oh, I wanna put my faith back in you. If, if I've described you in any kind of way, what I'd love for you to do is just raise your hand right now. If that's you, you wanna put your faith in him, go ahead, just raise it up. Amen, I see you. Yes, 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 yes. Well, come on, keep it up for just a moment. Yes, yes, absolutely. One, yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. So good. Your, God is going to answer this prayer today. He's going to answer this prayer today. So church, let's pray together as a family. And let's just, just pray it right after me. If it's your heart, just pray it right after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I put my trust in you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. I receive your forgiveness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and show me the path I should take. In Jesus' name, amen.